everybody. This is Paul from Hunts Photo Education, here to talk to you a little bit about electronic shutter, rolling shutter, silent shutter. So we had some interesting queries on our Facebook group uh, in regards to a specific situation of banding on a mirrorless camera. And I'm just going to say mirrorless camera because it can really pretty much happen on anyone's camera. So I just wanted to share my own personal uh, situation uh, and my experiences um, with using electronic shutter and silent shutter because I think silent shutter is really cool. On mirrorless camera, silent shutter allows you to fire essentially completely quiet, uh, but there are uh, some drawbacks. Um, the first time I experienced issues with silent shutter, uh, I was inside and I wanted to be discreet and kind of test out that concept of silent shutter. Um, immediately after I was in that situation, I actually went and photographed a road race where my shutter speed was about one one thousandth of a second and above. And I noticed that while shooting, uh, the images were kind of going nuts. Uh, and here are a couple examples of them. So here I, I'm at the beginning of the road race and I'm inside um, taking pictures. You know, there weren't that many people around, so I just kind of wanted to not be seen effectively. Um, and the pictures were coming out fine. Uh, and that's pretty pretty par for the course in this situation. Um, and then when I went outside and I started actually taking photos, uh, I, of course I'm shooting at a high shutter speed, I didn't really notice it at first, but then all of a sudden certain pictures started looking a little bit awkward, and you'll actually see on the screen here, this is a, a sequence of three photos of the same individual, and look at how his head kind of shifts in terms of how it looks. And so this is one of the issues that you can run into on silent shutter uh, or electronic shutter where uh, you have some uh, huge amounts of distortion. Um, and uh, so this is because of something called a rolling shutter. Uh, instead of the camera taking a picture all at once is kind of how we imagine it, uh, what it actually does is it takes a picture uh, it does it kind of line by line, like a pan and scan almost, where it starts from the top and goes down to uh, the bottom uh, very, very quickly. It all happens in an instant of a second. Um, the, the problem is uh, that it does happen. Uh, so the most common example that you'll see is usually uh, like an electronic fan or the blades of a helicopter. And when it's turning, uh, it doesn't actually look straight like the blades should be. They'll actually look like they've been curved, uh, kind of like that. So um, that's, that's an example. This is another example, probably not the best example, but you can kind of see how, you know, people start becoming like, especially here, you know, his whole body has kind of become oblong. And that's because as it's panning and scanning down, it's he's effectively moving in, in this direction and, and his whole body is kind of shifting over. So it just has a very, very weird effect uh, when you're taking pictures uh, using uh, electronic shutter. Uh, in this case, uh, I was photographing using silent shutter and uh, of course, uh, it. I, I figured it out pretty quickly and I switched it back to uh, the alternative, which is a mechanical shutter. Um, so electronic shutter is uh, just kind of a completely silent shutter that's inside the camera. Again, it does that little scan of the image. A mechanical shutter is actually a the mechanics of the camera taking the picture, actually opening and closing, uh, and the mechanical shutter is actually very advantageous uh, and, and what you'd want to be using for most of these shots, if not all of them. Um, and so that's the basis for uh, electronic shutter and movement. So the other common occurrence when you're using electronic shutter or silent shutter is photographing under fluorescent lighting. Um, some artificial lights, uh, like tungsten lights, are, are constant, uh, but others, like fluorescent lights, are not constant. And if you've ever seen a really slow motion sporting event, uh, like someone shooting a basketball or something like that, uh, you'll actually see those light up signs in the background. They'll actually, they're actually going to flicker. Your uh, sensor, again, being scanned in that electronic way, the fluorescent lighting flickers. And so you have to imagine when you're taking a picture with that flicker, one line gets scanned and the exposure is correct. The next line gets scanned and the exposure isn't correct.
and so on and so forth and so on. One's exposed properly, one's exposed darker. One's exposed properly, one's exposed darker. Again, because it's that scanning motion when you're using the electronic shutter or that silent shutter, which is going to alter the exposure from line to line to line. So here are some of the examples uh, of photographing when using that. So uh, this is, again, from a couple of years ago, but it's a situation that I uh, actually ran into. I went over to a friend's house. They have uh, a somewhat newborn child. And so you can, you know, at the beginning, it's kind of hard to tell that anything's actually happening. I mean, when I look back on this, even now, I look at this background here, and, and I personally, I see these lines as being blinds uh, behind them. But in reality, this is actually a solid colored wall, and those, uh, those band, that banding is actually happening in the photograph itself, uh, even over the people. So it's actually a, a very negative uh, thing that's happening. Um, and so, you know, that's something that you kind of have to deal with. That is, that is effectively the light flickering again. So, you know, I'm going to kind of zoom in here a little bit so you get a slightly better idea. So there's that first line that gets scanned by your sensor and it's exposed properly because at the time that that was being scanned, okay, the light was at full power. This black line going across or the darker line going across, it's because the light, the flicker from that fluorescent light was not happening. Happening, not happening. Happening, not happening. As you go through the entirety of the photograph. And, you know, again, it's, I think it's less prominent on the face of the subject here, but it's still happening. Okay? And that's unfortunately something that you just kind of have to deal with. Um, I was photographing at 1 200th of a second had I dropped my shutter speed down, or if I'd been shooting with a mechanical shutter, I would not have had that issue. So the other situation that I have found myself in is when I'm outside and I'm not using silent shutter, but for some reason on my camera, I have had electronic shutter set, um, which is again, all of these situations I think I've set by accident uh, rather than it being a purposeful reason. Um, so this is the, the last example. I was outside uh, using my flash, using high-speed sync, and taking some photos. And if you know anything about high-speed sync, high-speed sync is effectively a pulse. So it's kind of working in the same way that a fluorescent light is, except it's, you know, a flash, uh, and it's for a very short period of time. And, and this is the, you know, you can see it, you know, the, uh, all over the subject, and, and it becomes very, very prominent. Um, where uh, effectively here you can see, you know, the banding that's happening in this. Uh, and again, it's because the camera was set to electronic shutter. And again, in this case, it's happening vertically because I have my camera vertical, uh, but that same sort of effect is happening. One line, it's there. One line, it's not. One line, it's there. One line, it's not. And of course, this is very, very intense because I've got my shutter speed at one eight thousandth of a second. And, um, you know, again, electronic shutter, just not able to keep up with it because of how it's scanning the image. I wouldn't have had this issue if I was shooting with a mechanical shutter. Uh, it was totally by accident that the electronic shutter was even activated. This was not in silent shutter because when you're in silent shutter, you actually can't fire a flash. Um, but uh, still had this issue. And even as I dropped my shutter speed a little bit, here I'm at one four thousandth of a second, okay, you still have that banding issue. You know, it's still there. It's just less prominent than at one eight thousandth of a second. Again, because there's a difference in exposure. It's really unfortunate because I really did enjoy a lot of these photos that I was taking, um, and and they're just they're really ultimately unusable. To simplify, uh, the idea is the higher the shutter speed is, uh, the more intense this issue is going to uh, become. Ultimately, when you go to lower shutter speeds, this isn't an issue uh, because essentially it just kind of absorbs everything into that uh, exposure. But most of the time, you're probably not going to want to shoot at like a 30th of a second, 
using silent shutter because why are you using silent shutter or electronic shutter to begin with? Uh, probably because you're maybe inside and you don't want to be loud um, and maybe you're photographing people uh, and why would you want to be at a 30th of a second if that is the case? So you also have to remember the only reason that this is happening at all is because you're photographing using silent shutter or electronic shutter. When you're photographing using a mechanical shutter, which again is the alternative, none of this has any kind of issue. So the last question is, is there a use for silent shutter? Absolutely, there's a use for silent shutter. You just have to be aware of the environment that you're in. If you are utilizing a lot of natural light that's coming in, then that's great. Uh, you can absolutely use silent shutter in that situation. If you're photographing using tungsten light, you can absolutely still do that. Uh, if you're using fluorescence, uh, if you have fluorescence in the environment that you're in, you just have to be aware that that can be something if you're shooting with silent shutter or electronic shutter that, that can have an effect on it. Uh, and as cameras get better and more cameras are coming out, they will become a lot closer uh, to that higher performing level. For right now, it's something that you have to kind of make sure you watch, be careful of. Uh, so again, to reiterate, if you're using electronic shutter, uh, if you're using silent shutter, just be aware that that can happen. You can have that banding issue if shooting in fluorescent lights. Lowering your shutter speed will help mitigate that, but it's a, a trade-off, of course. And don't use silent shutter when you're photographing at very, very high speeds. Hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to follow up with me. Classes at huntsphoto.com, or you can comment on the video.